Hey guys, it's Megan and welcome to today's video. I wanted to do a video that's a little different for my channel, but it's something that my family and I recently went through and I felt like I learned some things and found some things that really helped our family get through it and so I wanted to share it with you guys in case this helps any of you that might be going through a similar situation that we were going through. So if you don't know, my family and I had a bulldog named Nala and she was eight years old and we got her a month before we found out we were pregnant with my daughter. So literally my daughter and our bulldog like grew up together and she was just such a light in our lives. She always made us laugh. She just had the greatest personality and we loved her dearly and unfortunately in February we found out that she had cancer and um, when we found out that day it wasn't looking good she had already kind of lost a lot of use in the back of her leg we originally thought that maybe she sprained her leg or just hurt her leg somehow and so when we got back with the when we got to the doctor and we got the cancer diagnosis it completely floored us it was not what we were expecting at all and um, the doctor didn't know how long the she was going to live and um, we knew that surgery and amputation wasn't the right fit for her because of her age and her other legs were already pretty weak they wouldn't be able to hold her on three legs for an extended you know life really and um, so we chose to put her in a, like a quote-unquote hospice uh, situation so I took care of her I fed her every single day, all day, whatever she needed. I gave her all of her pills. I just showered her with love, my family and I did. And I knew that I wanted to make sure that I could make this as easy as possible for my daughter, um, who's seven. And um, it was so hard for me as well because I've worked from home for the past eight years and actually a little even more than that. And so I was next to Nala all day, every day. And she was just such a big part of my life so I was also needing to help get myself through the process as well so I started researching things and I found some great just articles and things on Pinterest of different ways to help your child grieve and cope with a sick dog a dog with cancer and then obviously a death um, so the first thing that I got I ordered some books and I'm going to show you the two books that I ordered for her I ordered these off of Amazon. I read the reviews on them and they got really good reviews. Um, I will link everything that I talk about in the description box below if you are interested in any of these. These were really good books. I will say that this first one is called I'll Always Love You. I read in the reviews of this book to, if you're gonna get this book, it's better to get this book if your dog hasn't already passed yet because it does mention in the book kind of like making sure to tell your dog that you love them constantly so I don't feel like it's a great book to give if your dog has already passed because your child might feel bad that they didn't get to tell the dog that they love them enough. It was perfect for us because we knew we had a little bit of time left with Nala. We didn't know how long but we knew that we could manage her pain for a little while. So we read this book and it helped remind Lennon, my daughter, that you know, just to constantly every day tell her you love her so much, show her her love, show her your love and all that. So this was a really good book. It's not too long. There's not a lot of words on each page. So your child, if she's a little, he or she's a little bit older, um, can read it with you or to you. The other book that I got is called When Shiner Died and it's a children's book about pet loss and it's this specific family that went through a loss with their dog and I like that it's illustrated it looks a lot like you know like a kid did it and the inside has pictures like real pictures from their dog and sometimes it's just good if a child can know like she's he or she's not the only one that's having to go through this unfortunately so many of us have to go through this with our dogs or pets or anything like that even family members but obviously we're talking about pets so the book has a little bit more words on each page but it was still a book that my daughter could help read like we shared taking turns reading and i really like about this book at the end it has um it says these are some other things we do when we miss shiner and it gives some just you know, look at pictures on a photo album or on the computer, um, go to where Shiner's buried and stuff like that. So I like that it gives other examples of things to do in the book. 
And then at the end it has an area where your child can add their own picture and things about their dog. I like that they do this because it makes the book feel a little bit more personal and Lennon just really enjoyed doing that and she did it right next to Nala when um, obviously Nala was alive. So I definitely recommend finding some books that you can read with your children, whether you get it, um, you know, you buy it or you go to the local library and get one from the library or just look up articles that you can print out and maybe read with your children. I think that it's nice when a child, especially a younger child, can sit there and read it with you and it kind of helps them go through the process with you so they don't feel alone. So books would be my first recommendation. The next thing that I ordered for her, but I didn't give it to her right away. Like as soon as I found out that Nala had cancer and we didn't know how long we were gonna have with her, I immediately started like looking everything up. I found this little stuffed animal of a bulldog so that anytime she was missing Nala, when she was gone, she could cuddle with this. My daughter likes to have like a specific stuffed animal that she cuddles with at night when she sleeps. So I thought this would be really good for her to have. And just, you know, every time she's missing Nala a lot to come and snuggle with it. And I didn't give this to her until we knew it was getting about towards the end. Like I could tell that Nala um, wasn't, just wasn't comfortable anymore with her pain. And, and the pain was just getting too bad. And um, so we had a couple days where we were kind of getting, leading up to putting, letting her go. And um, so that's when I gave Lennon this stuffed animal and she has cuddled with it a lot. And so I'm really glad that I also found this on Amazon. Thank God for Amazon. I mean, goodness gracious. So I definitely recommend getting a stuffed animal for your child. If you can find one that is your dog breed or one that kind of looks like your dog. Um, I think that that has really helped Lennon, especially at night when she could miss Nala and right when it was all happening, she like was just holding this so tight. So I'll get more into that in just a minute. Another thing that I ordered from Amazon, when I ordered that in the books, I ordered this um, picture frame. We have the same picture in both sides because I actually, we're going to put a different picture on one of the sides, but for now it just has the same picture in it. It has on here the Rainbow Bridge um, story, I guess you would call it. If you don't know what it is, if you just search Rainbow Bridge dog, Rainbow Bridge or anything like that, you'll find all of it. It makes me cry when I, when I read it. So, um, but it does have this written here, so I thought that she would like it because she can always read it. And then it was just a cute little frame that was obviously in the shape of a dog bone. And I thought it would be nice for her to have this in her room so she could just look at it whenever she was missing Nala. But when everything was about to happen with Nala, um, like it was a couple days before, but we knew it was the end about, Lennon mentioned that she wished she had a locket so that she could put a picture of Nala in her locket and it would always be close to her heart. And so immediately I was like, okay, let me go on Amazon. So I found her a locket. I only had a couple days to be able to get it and with everything that was going on with Nala, I didn't have time to run to a store to try and find the locket. So of course I went on Amazon and I found one that I could get prime in like two day, the, the two day shipping. This is what the locket looks like. It's just a plain gold locket, but it has a little bit of um, detail on the front of it we are going to get a picture of Lennon to put on the um, on the other side but she's liked wearing this and just having this around her neck this is an adult size locket but it actually fits on her really well I read reviews of some of the children's um, lockets and they said that the heart is just so small that they couldn't fit a picture in it I wanted to make sure that we could fit a, you know a little picture in it so I did get the bigger one and I'm glad that I got this size because I think it's the perfect size for her. So I'm really happy that we ended up getting this locket because it's made especially the day after my daughter had it on. She just kept like opening it and looking at it and kissing it and it was just so hard to see but like sweet at the same time. So I'm super thankful that we got that. Um, another thing that we did, we wanted to make sure Nala was already hurting enough that she when we found out um, that we couldn't like go and take her to do things. And I've heard um, people say like they, when they find out their dog has cancer, they'd like have like a bucket list of things to go do with your dog and stuff like that. Unfortunately, we couldn't really do that with Nala because of her back leg. She literally 
couldn't use it at all and it was just really hard for her to get around so if you are not in that situation though I think like creating a bucket list of things that you've always wanted to do with your dog would be something that would be nice to do with you and your family and your dog um, I think that's another good way of just creating a few more memories if you are lucky enough to you know have some extra time with them before they pass another thing that we decided that we wanted to do was she loved being outside so much and we wanted an area to go to whenever we kind of want to talk to Nala I mean we believe that you can talk to them anywhere but sometimes it's nicer if you're just outside looking up at the sky or the stars or anything and kind of talk to them up there um like out there I mean sorry I'm like tongue-tied it's hard for me to talk about this um but I really feel like the things that we did truly helped us a lot and helped my daughter a lot. She handled it so much better than I think I would have at her age. So we knew we wanted to create an area where we could go and talk to Nala. We want to make it like an actual little garden and put flowers and some plants in there that are easy to keep alive because I don't want plants dying in Nala's area and I don't have the greenest of thumbs. Um, so we're gonna do some succulents in there, but we just have to get some more pots and containers and stuff And we're putting some chairs around there We want to get like a little bird bath and a little fountain. So I think if you can have an area that you dedicate to um, Be like a memorial kind of thing. Is that the right word? An area where you talk about your dog or you sit and reflect on your dog um, We got her cremated so so we didn't bury her um, there, but we found a little bulldog statue. We haven't bought it yet, but we found it. And so we're going to buy it um, and put it out there. So I think that's just another way that you can keep their memory alive and um, give your child peace and comfort knowing that they can go to that area anytime that they want to talk. Since we knew Nala was going to pass, but she was still with us, we brought Nala out to that area that we kind of like started constructing. Um, so that she could smell it. We wanted her to go to the bathroom in that area so that she could just have her scent there. And so we made sure to do that. And we we're like doing, we painted some rocks to put in that area. And when we were painting the rocks, Nala was sitting out on the porch with us while we were painting them and just little things that um, we did with Nala that we could also put in an area once she passed. So I think that really helped um, Lennon has gone there multiple times to just sit. The first couple days were pretty hard and like the, that night um, that after she had passed, Lennon, I found Lennon outside um, crying but she was sitting in the area that we are calling Nala's garden so and she was up looking at the sky um, and obviously we went out there and comforted her and but it made me feel good knowing that she felt comfortable to go to that area um, to talk to Nala. So I think that was a really helpful thing that we did. I'm really glad that we did it. The one other thing I wanted to touch on is the actual process of let, saying goodbye and letting your animal go. We found this company called Lap of Love. I don't know if they're just a local company, um, but I will put their website in the description box below as well. This company, I'm sure there's other companies out there if you're not in this area that are that do a similar thing. This company was the most amazing company ever. I feel like so thankful that we were able to find this company and and get in touch with them. Scheduling your dog's death was like the hardest thing ever on my husband and I. It just felt awful. And so we called and rescheduled this like multiple times. We'd be like, no, she's doing a little bit better. Like it's not her time yet. And we'll give, she'll give us a better sign when it's her time. And so when we would call and then have to change the appointment and we had some stuff going on that final week, they were so understanding every single time that we had to call. They were such sweet, soft-spoken people. And that is exactly what you need when you're going through something, when you're this close to an animal and they're a part of your family you need that extra comfort and to have a company like this that is so understanding so after we made the official official appointment we knew it was time for her when she started crying at me 
Nala never cried before except if she was wanting to get up on the bed and she couldn't jump anymore. She used to be able to jump on the bed, but then she got to a point where she couldn't. And so she would cry to get up on the bed. That's the only other time that she, or that's the only time she cried until that last week and those last couple of days, she would just look at me and just cry and whine at me. And um, I knew, it, I told my husband, I was like, this is her giving us the sign because she never did that before. Um, so that's how we knew that it was time for her to go. Um, and so this company came out um, and the doctor comes out and they, let you talk to them and they don't rush she didn't rush us at all she was absolutely amazing and so so just so kind-hearted and you felt like she was it didn't feel like she was just there to put your dog to sleep like she f it felt like a a whole thing and we gave our daughter the choice of if she wanted to be there or not we Told her we understood either way um, she could go in her room we could have my parents pick her up so she didn't even have to be there or she could be right there with us and she said that she wanted to be right there with us so the doctor was you know very aware of her age and all that so she was even I don't know she was probably like that all the time but it just felt like she was just so amazing given Lennon's age and and um, and how emotional I was because I was a freaking basket case crying. Um, and what she did, I mean, she spent probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes with us just talking to us about Nala and petting Nala and all that stuff. And then she went over what she was going to do and they first give the dog a sedative and just let them go to sleep. And so they gave her the sedative and then she laid down and bulldog our bulldog most bulldogs snore super loud and once that sedative kicked in which was pretty quickly she was in like the deepest sleep we hadn't heard her snore that deep uh, in so long which reminded us of how much pain she was in before because she couldn't get in that deep of a sleep so they just let us pet her and talk to her when Nala was sedated they took some of her fur and she did some of her white she was white and brown and so she took some of the white fur and then she took some of the brown fur and put it in a little thing like this for us to be able to keep i actually want to put some of this fur in like a little they have little urns on um, amazon and on etsy that are like necklace urns that you can put someone's ashes in I wasn't going to put her ashes in it, but I wanted to find one that I could put some of her fur in so I could wear it um, and just have that piece of her with me. Um, so I love that they, they did this and there's enough that I could make one for my daughter and my husband if he wanted one as well and if she wanted one. Um, but I thought that after they did that, after she did that, I thought of that idea to put the fur in there because I was trying to think of what I could do with this. And um, so that's another thing that I'm going to um, do that is a little moment so that I can have. And then when she was sedated, the doctor also did a paw print of Nala's paw, which I thought was so nice. And then Lennon wanted each of us to do our fingerprint right there. So we just put our finger on it. And I would just love that this company, not only, you know, they're so thoughtful and I wouldn't even have thought to do it at that moment and the fact that we were able to have her paw print, have some of her fur, and it be such a beautiful day. We had peaceful music going, candles going. It was just like, if there was a way to have to go, that was the way. So if there is a company like this in your area and you are going through a similar situation, I highly recommend it or if you know someone that's going to be going through a situ situation like this. They did not pay me to say this. They didn't sponsor this by any means. I just had such an amazing experience with this company. I really wanted to share um, how, how great they were. This company made this process just a little bit easier for us and the doctor was just so unbelievably caring and thoughtful and um, I worried 
what was going to happen once Nala was gone officially. And I went and took Lennon out to Nala's garden. And um, we sat out there because I thought my husband was going to have to carry Nala out. But I asked him after um, how, what happened if he had to carry Nala. And he said, he said that he didn't have to, that they came and they brought, she brought a stretcher in. And it was so like, so, I mean, not nice, but it was just the thought of my husband having to like lift this big old bulldog, like, dead bulldog up and break that just killed me and so i'm so glad to know that like they she brought a stretcher in and laid her on the stretcher and put a blanket over her and put her out and put her nicely in the car you know i was just really really glad that we had this company because she was like almost like a therapist at the same time and Lynn and I were out in Olive's garden and the doctor came out there and she hugged us. And she, you know, sat in Olive's garden for a few minutes and it was just everything you could ask for out of a doctor. I mean, they have to see this stuff all the time and the fact that she had so much compassion and it just made it a little bit easier. Uh, Later that night, um, after she passed, she passed around 6 p.m. on April 19th. And um, that night, we all went back out to Nala's garden and we were looking at the stars together and talking about things with Nala and just talking to her and, you know, talking that she's now our Nala angel. And I'm so glad that we do, did make that little garden area and it's still a work in progress, but the idea is there. I think if you have a space that you can make a little memorial area, I think it can be really helpful. Um, so those are the main like things that we've done to get through and cope and grieve. Um, one other thing though I did want to mention is if you're having a situation similar to this, one and your dog hasn't passed yet, um, I highly recommend looking into CBD oil. I mentioned it in the first video that I did about right after I found out found out Nala's diagnosis. Um, I'll have that linked somewhere if you're interested in seeing it and you haven't seen it. Um, CBD oil is just cannabis oil. It really helps with inflammation and, and help with pain, but it's mostly for inflammation. Um, we really feel like it helps Nala so, so much. If you don't know what CBD oil is, I highly recommend looking into it, especially for dogs. Humans can take it too. Um, and we know that it helped so much. We needed the vet medicine as well because we tried it with just one and she didn't do as well. Then just the other and she didn't do it as well. It was the cocktail of the medicine from the vet mixed and also giving the CBD oil is where we saw her thrive the most. Um, so definitely look into CBD oil if you are still going, it's legal and it's, there's nothing psychoactive and it's not going to make the dog feel high or anything like that. It literally is just helps with inflammation, but you can do your own research on it. Um, I just know that it worked for us really well. One other thing that helped us with continuing to move forward is um, we started talking about a puppy and that is not going to work for every family obviously but for our family it felt right because we have been watching in a very sad state for the past three months it was just the energy was down and everything was a little bit sad we were taking care of a sick animal for you know three months plus and um and it was hard, it was really hard, and uh, really hard for a seven-year-old to have to watch that as well. So once we got, you know, dealt with the day and, you know, the next day, and, you know, we kind of mentioned about a puppy, and, um, you know, it's something that we feel like will bring a new life and energy to our family, and it felt right, it feels right for us. Um, and I'll have more on that in a video very, coming very soon. I do feel like though, if it's something that you and your family can do or want to do, um, you know, a puppy can always 
bring new life and energy into your home and from us and my daughter she's never gotten to like have a puppy because Nala and her kind of grew up together so she was too little to remember Nala as a puppy she wasn't even born when Nala was an official puppy so um, it'll be exciting to be able to see my daughter with a puppy and experience new things um, that she hasn't before and just have a new life in our household so I hope that these um, ideas and things that we did and some different tips and that the stuff that I shared I hope it can help you if you're going through a similar situation to us I know it's so hard it's so hard and the stuff that I talked about doesn't make the pain go away um, but if it can help in any way I that's why I did this I just want if I can help in any little bit of a way it is a good feeling to me because so many people reached out to me and and I'm so thankful to have so many amazing people in my life. It wasn't just people in person in my life, but all of the amazing people I've met through social media and YouTube that reached out to me and my family and it just touched us and meant the world to us and I'm so grateful and appreciative of it and I know that so many people are going through similar situations because they told, shared their story with me and that's what inspired me to kind of do this video is because you know it, it is what it is the situation happens so if I can help anyone else a little bit um, I feel like that was what I was supposed to do so and I wanted to do obviously if you did find this helpful um, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet I would love for you to subscribe I promise more most of my other content is happy content but I felt like this was a necessary video for me to do. So I hope you guys don't mind a little bit of a difference for this video today. But I thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.